Okay, so I wrote a book called No Drama Discipline with Dr. Dan Siegel, and it has been such a blast to talk about this book out in the world to parents and educators and mental health people and camps and all kinds of audiences. And here's the basic bottom line. Here's sort of my to the core what the book is about, and that is this, that when I say discipline, most people think the word this, that they associate with that is punishment or consequences. But discipline is teaching. It's skill building. And so when we actually think about discipline moments as moments to teach and build skills, then we can think about it like this, that if we are effective disciplinarians, and by disciplinarian, of course, I mean teacher and skill builder, then we're going to be disciplining less over time. Because as we teach and build skills, our children begin to do that for themselves. They become self-disciplined or self-taught. They've built skills for themselves that they can use in everyday moments. Now here's the deal. Most of what we do in the name of discipline is very counterproductive because we do it in ways that make it unlikely for our children to even learn. So if we're going to be effective disciplinarians, teachers, then our children have to be in a frame of mind in which to learn. So, here's a way to think about it. That if it's all about teaching, and if the brain is either in a receptive state in which it can learn, or it's in a reactive state in which it can't learn, this is a whole new way to think about discipline. A lot of bad behavior or problematic behavior happens because a child is in a reactive brain state. And so if I want to be an effective teacher, then one of the first things I have to do is help my child get into a receptive state so that they can learn. And one of the best ways to get a kid into a receptive state, and by the way, this works for adults too, is to connect with them, to bring empathy, to bring validation, to bring the four S's of attachment that Dan Siegel talks about, where kids feel safe and secure and seen and soothed. So in the name of discipline, one of the first things I might have to do, even in the face of problematic behavior, is soothe, bring empathy, bring connection, just like I would if they were physically hurt. But if they're in states of emotional distress, but it comes out as more aggressive behavior or disrespectful tone of voice or those kinds of things, still, in order for me to be effective in teaching them better ways to handle themselves in those moments, I may first start with empathy and connection and soothing. You're having such a hard time. What's going on with you? How can I help? You're so mad. I'm right here with you. Those kinds of things. And when we do that and we offer connection and empathy, and we help soothe them when they're in states of reactive brain activity, then they can move into a receptive place where they're calm, where they can learn. And that's where the discipline happens. That's where I can say, I know you know it's not okay to hit your brother, so what was going on for you? What can you do to make things right? What can you do differently next time? And to have that kind of a reflective dialogue. Obviously, this would be for a child who was verbal and, um, and could do those kinds of things. But we can lay the groundwork, even when they're little, in simpler language along those lines. If the whole point of discipline is to teach, my child has to be in a receptive state of mind. One of the best ways to get someone into a receptive state of mind is through connection and soothing. And then once the child is in that state of mind, that's where we address the behavior. We address how their behavior affected others. We address how they can do things differently in the future. And once we've taught and built skills, we've done our discipline. We are done. We can move on. And I want to encourage you to know that it's okay if you don't know what to do in any particular moment. We often have instincts that aren't great or we're often kind of in a reactive state of mind ourselves. But if we can keep teaching and skill building in mind, it will often change significantly how we discipline. Because a lot of what we do in the name of discipline is actually make kids more reactive, which means it's gonna be less likely for them to learn. Hold teaching and skill building in mind and know that one of your best discipline tools is connection, soothing, and empathy. 
I encourage you to go to my website, tinabryson.com, or check out the book, No Drama Discipline, to learn more.